so we'll start so we'll start with the first presentation which is on the academy objectives all right so uh, today we'll uh, have a look at the terms learning objectives curriculum overview and the evaluation plan for the tracker use level one academy so as we all know uh, about the dhs data models so dhs2 primarily has uh, two uh, main data models one for aggregate data collection one for tracker data collection as we all know the data sets are being used for collecting aggregate data from health facilities on a fixed frequency whereas within the tracker model we have two uh, kind of programs we have event programs and we have tracker programs the event programs are uh, for uh, uh, key events notifying key events uh, which are uh, which are uh, sort of a line listing register while the tracker programs as we understand are for tracking entities over a longer period of time for different disease programs and other scenarios both in health and non-health uh, domains So event pro programs, uh, they do collect individual data, but then there is no registration aspect to it. So it, event programs do not allow you to create, to track an individual person, item or a substance, but they do allow you to create a one-time entry for a specific uh, event or a specific person. Uh, this is particularly useful when you need granular data uh and there are no requirements to track or do individual follow-up for your specific use case uh, for example you want to make record of all the people who attended say behavioral change communication events for different health programs so there you don't need to make a track or you know, track these individuals over a period of time but you just need uh an information that in an sbcc event how many uh, candidates participated you maintain a line list attendance for that and perform your analysis on top of it where you can disaggregate data by the genders age groups etc uh if you have granular information collected so if you're doing surveys uh, line list surveillance then you can use the event programs very easily um for, for using the event programs you should have a good foundation of the event data model and there is an dhs2 event fundamental course available online which uh, you can enroll yourselves into and complete that so the information that we'll be sharing through this academy will be an add-on on the basics of event programs and data model that you have uh, understood and undertaken in the fundamentals online course Tracker programs, uh, the way they differentiate the event programs is that they collect individual level data, which involves registration of the individuals uh, or an item or a substance. Here you will be collecting some demographic or some identifiable information for the patient or the beneficiary whosoever is existing in the system as for your use case. So you need to have various identifiers. Uh, to be a part of a program so that you can track the individual through the system as they interact with different programs and services. So if uh, uh, I as sort of want to get enrolled in say malaria surveillance program, then I need to provide some information regarding my demographic details, my name, my age, my phone number, my address. And then if uh, tomorrow I need to uh, say get enrolled in NCD surveillance program, then the same person, the same profile can be then enrolled into uh, the uh, NCD surveillance programs as well. So one person can get registered once in the system and then can be enrolled into several programs uh, over a period of time, depending upon the services that the beneficiary needs for, uh, uh, for that specific uh, health program. Uh, the tracker model is a little more complex as compared to events. So we'll be spending some more time understanding this model in more detail. And therefore, we have a session today on the tracker data model so that we can revise the basic concepts of the tracker data model in DHIS2. And then when we start the course from Monday onwards, we will see how that model is applied in our use cases that we'll be discussing throughout the next five days in the academy. So the target audience for this course are uh, participants who want to understand the DHS tracker features and how to enter and analyze tracker data. So as the, the 
uh, academy says it's track use academy so here the focus is not on the configuration aspects but on the aspects of using events in tracker for data input as well as data analysis um, there are other tracker courses available that can also be taken later, uh, tracker configuration and implementation, tracker implementation management. So uh, do keep checking the uh, academy calendar on the DHS2 website. Uh, uh, the academies are being announced for remaining of this year and early next year as well now. So uh, in case you're interested to attend the further sets of academies that both online and on-site academies have also also been uh, are also starting again. So please keep a check on the page on the DHS website for latest information of what academies are being planned in your region, so that you can join those courses as well. So the basic consumption here is that either you have a background on DHIS2 and you have used DHIS2 before in your countries and organizations, or you have taken even fundamentals online course uh, so that you have the basic knowledge of the the uh, events data model um, so therefore we also have a session plan today later to brush up your skills on the tracker data model which also includes the event components as well so the learning goals that we have for this academy is to uh, within the community Community members have joined us for this academy to increase the level of understanding of the features that are available in DHS2 Tracker. As we all know, that DHS2 rapidly uh, evolves over time as new developments are happening with each release. So it's important for the users to stay up to date with the latest features that are being introduced, so that you can set a timeline. You know when potential upgrades can be made within your implementation, so that you can make use of the new features that are being introduced. Uh, the second objective of the learning goal is to increase the ability to enter tracker data. So uh, tracker itself is being redesigned and reconfigured into a new uh, latest application. So um, uh, you, uh, the idea is to increase the ability to ensure that you're able to uh, use all the features for tracker data entry, which may include data entry plus data quality protocols and uh, 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 creating uh, key information snippets uh, for the end user so that they can make best out of the data that they're entering in the system. Uh, of course, outputs are a critical component for any implementation. So there are many ways in which outputs can be generated in DHIS2 using the events and the tracker data model. So a uh, large focus is on increasing the ability of the participants to create outputs from the tracker data that they're collecting. So the performance objectives, uh, uh, for us as facilitators and for you as participants is to get uh, a good knowledge on what DHIS2 tracker is and in what different methods you can capture uh, tracker data. Then in what scenarios you can utilize these different data capture methods to enter tracker data, which we'll talk about uh, the web application, we'll talk about the Android application, uh, both ways of uh, data collection. And then once you've collected the data, how you can review that data and generate outputs using the inbuilt analysis tools within DHIS2. So we'll cover the analytics applications, uh, data visualizer, event reports, event visualizer, uh, and some custom applications which have, have been developed in different countries depending upon their specific requirements. So we'll also cover the supplementary apps that can be used to enhance the the DHIS2's ability to create tracker data outputs, which may not be available in the core but they uh, are uh, part of the add-on applications which you can add in your page test implementations uh, so the learning objectives include uh, uh, describing the latest tracker features and how to use them uh, describe the tackle data model sorry tracker data model in dhs2 uh, having a detailed look at both web and android devices how they can be used used to uh, capture data, uh, identify the applications which can be used for tracker data analysis, uh, creating tracker data outputs in form of table charts and maps. So we'll also have a look at the maps application and see how tracker data and or events data can be used uh, in form of clusters and also in form of thematic maps using the program indicators and indicators which are getting sourced from your tracker data collection. And dashboards, as we know, are uh, an important aspect for data visualization uh, 
uh, and uh, dissemination. So we'll also see how you can create dashboards using your tracker data. So uh, we'll quickly review the agenda. The copy of the agenda is available on the Moodle platform that we'll shortly come to um, on terms of how you can register yourselves on Moodle and uh, get access to the, the, the course content. So just let me go to the agenda once. Yeah. So as you are already aware, the Academy uh, was comprising of five, uh, three major events. So you had the first webinar that uh, you attended today. The participants who were not able to attend yesterday's webinar, uh, the recording of the webinar is available now and it has been posted in the announcements channel on Slack. So we'll also review Slack. That would be our communications platform for this academy where participants can reach out to the facilitators and ask questions related to their implementations related to the course and also related to the exercises that they'll be doing through the academy. Uh, we are today on day two, which is the DHS2 webinar for course introduction and track data model. So today we'll be looking at the uh, platforms that we'll be using uh, uh, for the academy that is Moodle, DHIS2 uh, and uh, and Slack. Uh, we'll also do a quick review of the academy use cases just to giving just to give you a brief context on how what use cases you'll be using and how how these programs are designed so that you know uh, you can you have enough context before we start uh, using these use cases on the DHIS2 instance for uh, uh, for uh, sessions as well as your uh, exercises. We have a quick session of community of practice today. So we'll have Gassim, the, uh, the community of practice coordinator, who will give an overview of the COP. And we have some badges, which we'll be happy to assign to certain participants based on their involvement across the next five days. So Gassim will discuss that. Uh, we have already added you on Slack, so most of you uh, uh, would have received an email uh, requesting you to join Slack. In case you haven't got that email, do let us know via email. We can add you on Slack or you can also uh, add it on the Zoom chat today and with your email address so that we can check if your uh, account has been added on Slack or not. And then to close the webinar, we'll have... Uh, one hour session on the tracker data model where we look at the key terms and the conceptual overview of the data model. Day one, which is Monday 26th, we will start with uh, the day with uh, the tracker capture web application where we'll see all the functionalities which are available in DHS to tracker regarding data entry on the web. And then we'll have a supplementary session on the tracker capture data entry on Android on how you can enter tracker data on an Android device. Day two, uh, the 27th, we will have a detailed session on Android analysis. So this is a new session which has been introduced now for in the academy where a lot of features have been developed for analytics on the Android application. So we'll have a three-hour session where we'll see what kind of analysis uh, outputs are now available on the Android app, both in terms of patient data and as well as aggregate information. Day three, that is 20. Eight, we'll focus on the data outputs on how you can analyze the tracker data using the, the inbuilt analytics applications available in DHIS2 that are event reports, event visualizer, and maps. So day three will focus on that. Day four, 29th would again be an extension of day three where we'll keep on discussing the, uh, the tracker data analytics uh, where we'll have a look at uh, data visualizer uh, in terms of analyzing your program indicators and indicator. Then we'll have a session on custom apps that uh, can support your track implementation depending upon the use cases. So we'll see a couple of examples on how custom web applications were developed for meeting certain analytics requirements, which were not part of the DHS to core feature set. So we'll have a discussion on that. And then we'll ha have a quick discussion on the next steps on what other academies and community of practice, how you can utilize the other academies and the COP platform for communicating with the community, uh, getting to know about the latest features and uh, uh, alerts related to security uh, releases. So everything is available on the COP platform. So we'll give an overview of that. Day five, that is Friday 30th, would be your uh, 
uh, exam day. So with each of these sessions on each day, you'll have some graded assignments to do and which will be adding to your evaluation. So we'll just see a quick reference to uh, your evaluation uh, requirements as well. So the certification process will consist of uh, three parts, uh, ungraded exercises, graded assignments, and final exam. Uh, so with each session that we do each day, you'll have a couple of exercises to do. Uh, some of them would be ungraded, some of them would be graded, and then you'll have the final exam on Friday, that is 30th of uh, September. Uh, the passing uh, grades for the academy are set to 70%, uh, which are calculated from graded assignments as the final exam. The breakup of the uh, the the marks is given on the next slide, so I'll cover that there. Um, so the grade assignments are just to test your knowledge that whether you have grasped the con the the concepts clearly. Uh, they will these sessions and the recordings and the course material will be available on Moodle. So in case you miss a session. Uh, you can review the course on Moodle and the recordings. And uh, if you view the recordings later, you should be okay for the exam as well. So uh, the the uh, mechanism is flexible on how you access the, the material uh, and the examination. So in terms of the learning evaluation plan, uh, this is the breakup of the 100 marks from which you will be evaluated. Feedback contains a weightage of 10%. So daily feedback will be marked as your daily attendance. So uh, we request you that every day when you join the sessions from Monday onwards, you leave uh, the feed, you do fill the feedback form. So if you fill the feedback form, then it will automatically count as your attendance and we'll add on to your overall uh, percentage. You have assignments for each of these topics, data entry web, data entry Android, Android analysis, event visualizer, event reports, map, program indicators. So that will contribute to 10% each and then exam has a weightage of 20%. So total will be 100% and you need to score 70% to get a completion certificate, uh, which is automatically generated if you have qualified the scores. And you could use that certificate uh, for your uh, reference as well. So in terms of the exercises and assignments, the course relies on uh, the concept of learning by doing. So you will have a look at the demonstrations that the facilitators provide over the next five days. And you will have these uh, ungraded exercises for nearly every session. And you'll have graded assignments uh, that will just shown for what topics you'll have these graded assignments to do. Uh, you will be given time to perform the ungraded exercises during the sessions. So while the demonstrations are happening, we'll take quick, uh, quick breaks in between to uh, help you do the ungraded assignments. Uh, you need to perform all graded assignments after the sessions and can ask support by the Slack channel. So the graded assignments are um, the post academy hours uh, assignments for you uh, where if there is any challenge with any question you can reach out to the facilitators on slack uh, so we'll we'll try to respond to all your questions at the earliest possible you will be given a week after the academy to close all your graded assignments so uh, each of the assignments is given a due date on Moodle, so we'll see, and that those due dates will be followed. So, if during the course of the academy you were the you were not you were not able to complete all grade assignments, you will be given a week to do it. But you have to give the exam on Friday because that uh, cannot be extended further. So, in case you have missing grade assignments, you can complete after the academy uh, next seven days. But the exam has to be given on Friday itself, so that it counts to your overall uh, grades. Uh, feedback is a critical component uh, for both the organizers as well as the participants. So we'll ask you to fill in the feedback on the sessions, the material and the instructions given on that specific day. Uh, on the final day, you'll, you'll fill the final academy feedback. So the feedback will continue to contribute to 10% of your overall grades. So uh, and the feedback will also be um, uh, proof of your attendance for that specific day. So ensure that you fill the feedback every day so that you get uh, the full 10% for your attendance uh, as it counts to the overall uh, 
dates that you have. <clears throat> so, if any questions, uh, please feel free to, to ask on the chat. Uh, the facilitators will respond to those questions. Um, yeah, so that's the end of the presentation. So, I'll share, stop sharing my screen. All right, so those were the uh, course objectives and uh, uh, and the overall assessment plan for the academy. Uh, moving forward, uh, we will now quickly introduce the course facilitators who are available on the call. Uh, and then we'll move to the participant uh, introductions as well. Uh, so Pamut, if you could introduce yourself, please. Yeah. Oh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Pamod from uh, HISP Sri Lanka. So uh, I'm generally based in Sri Lanka and right now I'm in uh, Oslo, Norway. So I'll be a facilitator for this entire uh, uh, DHS2 Data Use Academy. Uh, so I have experience in implementing DHS2 in several countries, mainly in the Southeast Asia region for last, uh, I mean, almost a decade now. Uh, so looking forward to contribute. Thank you. Thanks, Pamod. Uh, Gitika, if you could please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I am Gitika, working with HISP India for, I think, eight years now. Uh, I have been majorly working on the tracker implementations for different programs and for the capacity building. Um, during the next week, I'll be taking few sessions and also supporting during the other sessions and look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you. Thanks, Kitika. Uh, Sumit, if you could introduce yourself, please. Okay, I guess someone is having some problems, so I'll introduce myself. Hi, everyone. I am Saurav. I am currently working with Hispendia uh, for supporting DHS to implementations uh, from the last 10 years or so. Uh, I have been largely supporting the countries in South Asia and Central Asia region and some countries in the Middle Eastern region for their DHS to implementations, both aggregate and tracker. So I'll be a part of uh, sessions in the forthcoming week uh, for different topics. And I look forward towards interacting with you uh, uh, and uh, hoping that you'll be able to participate in all the sessions that are in the plan uh, moving forward. Uh, thank you. So um, what we could do now is move towards the, uh, uh, the participant introduction. So I'll call the name one by one and I would request Asked you uh, to please give a quick introduction uh, of uh, your uh, uh, the organization or the Ministry of Health that you're representing, and uh, a quick uh, few lines on your DHS to implementations that you're supporting. So we'll start with uh, Abu Saim Marif. Uh, so if you can please introduce yourselves. I think, sir, we can come back to Abu Saim later. Probably we can move on to the next participant. Next, we have Ahmed Al Mogahar. Sir, if you can please introduce yourself. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Ahmed Al Mogahar. I'm from Yemen and I work in the Ministry of Health in the department of the organizations. Okay. Uh, looking forward uh, to, for this, uh, for this session. All right, thank you so much. Uh, 
Next, you have Amin Ahmed Jamzi. Uh, can I say something? Yes, hello everyone. This is Amin Ahmed Jamzi from Comoros Island, in the Indian Ocean. I work uh, for the Ministry of Health of Comoros. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, you have Arnold Maruba. Okay. <laughs> I'm really changed the career. All right, I think we can move ahead. Uh, Arsala. I'm really changed the career. From Hello, everyone. Hello, Pamund. How are you? My name is Arslan and I am from this Pakistan and looking forward for this usable event. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Arslan. Good to hear from you. Thanks, Arslan. Uh, Ashan, if you could please introduce yourself. Uh, hello, I am Ikram from Maldives, working with National Immunization Program. I think some odd we have worked together, right? Yes, Ikram. Nice to see you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ashan, yes. Uh, yes. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Ashan. I'm a medical officer uh, from Sri Lanka. I have some experience in uh, DHS2 implementations of uh, aggregate and both uh, tracker modules. So hoping to learn something new and refresh my knowledge uh, from this session. Thank you. Thanks, Ishan. Uh, Mr. Azhar, are you? Can you please introduce yourself, please? Okay, uh, maybe we can move ahead. Uh, Ms. Cecilia Lagi, please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Cecilia Alagi. I work with FHI 360 Nigeria. I'm the technical officer, senior technical officer for GIS and database. I have experience working with the aggregate data model. I recently began um, some implementation using the tracker. And I'm hoping to gain better understanding of how the tracker is set up and used and also analytics. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Choggel Namgel. Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Choggel Namgel, and I'm from Bhutan, working uh, in Ministry of Health for uh, health management and information system. And I have some experience in working with uh, both aggregated and tracker programs in DHIS2. Thank you. Thank you, Chogel. Uh, next, we have Deepal. Yeah, I'm uh, Dr. Deepal Jesuya coming from Sri Lanka. I have some experience in uh, DHIS2 uh, in NCD activities and antenatal care. Uh, thank you for everybody. I am uh, waiting to learn new things uh, you are giving in this session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. People. Uh, next, you have Ito. Hello, everyone. I am Ito from Myanmar. Uh, I'm, I'm currently working for Pat Myanmar Country Program, uh, specifically alumni malaria. Uh, we are trying to implement a malaria information system, which is based on DHIS2 module for case-based surveillance system, yes. I was an experience in the implementation of the to aggregate reporting system for HIV, TB, and malaria for Ministry of Health. Thank you. Thanks, Ito. Uh, 
Uh, next, you have uh, George. Okay, maybe we can move ahead. Uh, sorry. Oh, okay. Yes, George, please go ahead. Yeah, so, sorry, I'm George Bevy. I'm the one who's been making noise in the chat box. So I'm from Nairobi, Kenya, East Africa. And um, I'm working with the Kenya Medical Research Institute in a collaboration with another um, trust known as Welcome, uh, based in Oxford. Um, so some of the work we are doing is uh, we are working the, uh, with the hospitals um, in the um, mainstream, rather trying to improve the quality of documentation. And some of the data that we're collecting is actually patient level data for the patients. So one one of the things that we are trying to do is trying to align this with the ministries reporting and the, uh, that's where the tracker module comes in. So I'm happy to learn more so that we can uh, better implement uh, our work moving forward. Thanks. Uh, thank you, George. Uh, next we have Dr. Gopika Priyanath. Um, we're facing some uh, breaking at your end, the voice is breaking. If you could please put uh, your introduction on the chat, that would be helpful. Yeah, I'm Gobika Priyanand uh, from uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, I'm medical officer in health informatics, uh, Ministry of Health. Uh, I have some experience regarding the DHS2 checker, as well as I would like to know more, much more uh, regarding the document. Uh, thank you. Uh, next, we have James. Okay, um, thank you, everyone. Um, good morning um, from my end. Um, so, I work with Sight Savers Nigeria. My name is James Toler and Shagba. I work with Sight Savers Nigeria. Um, I'm currently responsible for the rollout of um, DHIS2 um, as the national reporting tool for the mass uh, reporting mass distribution of drugs for the neglected tropical diseases in Nigeria. So we work closely with the Ministry of Health. Um, we've been using aggregate, the aggregate module on DHIS2 and more recently the event that has the capture application, but I I'm really interested and I look forward to um, a great learning experience in the course of this academy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, James. Next, we have Dr. Janaka. Um, yeah, uh, good morning to uh, I'm in the uh, UK. So this is uh, uh, 8.45 me. Uh, so uh, I'm Dr. Janaka from Sri Lanka. Uh, actually, currently I'm uh, at United Kingdom. Uh, I have come here for my postgraduate studies and uh, I have some experience with DHIS2, which is uh, especially in health sector disaster management and, uh, uh, and anti-malaria campaign, which we have done some tracker programs with, uh, especially with Dr. Pamod, and as well as some uh, CKDU kidney disease, uh, which we have done with uh, actual President Health Secretarial Office, uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, I have uh, more than 10 years experience in DHIS2. I started uh, in 2012 with the help of CHSP India uh, at, uh, with the assessment of uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Sandeep Sohe. Uh, and I had a nice time uh, in Delhi. So that is my experience on DHIS2. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, you have uh, Mr. Kogonza Anthony. Oh, 
Yes. Uh, good morning to you all. This is uh, Kugonza Anthony from Uganda, working with uh, the AIDS support organization. And uh, I work as a data clerk supporting uh, a health facility in the Tungamo district. So uh, I'm actually a user of DHS2 because uh, here we use it uh, for reporting uh, most of the Minister of Health reports. That's a weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual basis. So uh, that's mainly our main reporting channel of MOH reports. And then also, uh, I've also used the tracker applications in some of the DHS2 platforms. For instance, uh, I've used the tracker in the KP, key population combination program, whereby uh, we use the tracker to, to keep track of our clients who are receiving the prevention programs. And then also I've used the tracker in uh, another program, which is uh, DREAMS, mainly looking at uh, also in line with HIV prevention, mainly targeting the adolescent girls and young women. Also, we have a, a tracker which helps us to track um, the services that uh, we are providing to them. So that's my experience with DHS2 and, uh, and the tracker. And also actually, we are also using the tracker in the management of COVID-19 vaccination data. So we also have the APVAC tracker that we are using here. Thank you. Back to you, the host. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have Kutaiba. Can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is Kutaiba working uh, at uh, uh, Doctor of the World organization based on Turkey. Uh, I'm Syrian and I'm working in Syrian program. So uh, now we develop in our in developing uh, customization DHIs for our health facility in Syria. So uh, I believe this training will be uh, useful for me. Thank you all for this nice webinar. Thank you. Uh, next, you have uh, Liban Bashir. Please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adnan Bashir. <clears throat> I'm basically leading his Pakistan. And uh, we are having uh, a number of implementations going on in Pakistan regarding DHIS2. Uh, and one of them, the most important one is uh, the TV tracker we're going to implement in Pakistan. Apart from them, uh, that, there are a number of other implementations like uh, HMIS and IDSR implementations that we're looking after. Um, thank you so much. Over. Thanks, Adnan. Uh, Liban, if you could also introduce yourself, please. Uh, I'm Liban Bashir from Ethiopia. We have used uh, uh, DHIS2 in multiple activities and programs. Uh, some of the prominent programs are uh, in data collection for every month from health facilities. The other one recently launched was uh, COVAX uh, that we use for uh, the restriction of uh, COVID-19 vaccine, uh, vaccination status over all the country, which uh, will uh, give a certificate of completion uh, to the individuals that took the Thanks, Liban. Uh, next, we have Mariam. If you could please introduce, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. This is Mariam. Uh, I'm working as research officer at HISP uh, Pakistan. Uh, I want to know a uh, deep about tracker. Uh, as uh, Nan mentioned, that we are going to collaborate with many programs. Thank you. Thanks, Madam. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Thirpasa. Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, hello, my name is Mr. Thirpasa. I'm from Ethiopia, uh, and I have uh, five years' experience in uh, DHIS. 
and I'm working as a regional IT expert uh, in Dredo region, uh, and I'm a core uh, customization team uh, person, and uh, I'm working in customization of the DHIS tool at Federal Ministry of Health, uh, and we have been uh, used uh, the DHI system uh, for HMIS, that means routine data entry, uh, apps uh, can be used uh, uh, routinely, monthly, quarterly, as well as uh, annually. Uh, and the uh, other uh, implementation that we made is uh, a tracker program for uh, COVID-19. Uh, previously, uh, COVID testing uh, uh, has been captured using tracker program. But now uh, we have been using for uh, COVID vaccination, and uh, we are still using uh, this tracker program in our country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, you have Messi. If you could please introduce yourself. Maybe we can move ahead. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Jamal Al Zidan, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, uh, hello everyone, thank you. My name is Mohammed Jamal. Uh, I have been working uh, in uh, Assistant Coordination Unit uh, 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 in Iwan program as a Data Management Specialist based at uh, Turkey. Uh, we, I have experience uh, in DHI is to about five years. Uh, now we use uh, uh, DHIS2 in uh, immunization program uh, as a tracker, and we plan it to uh, to use DHIS2 in other program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, you have uh, Mio Mio Mon. Can you please introduce yourself, please? Hello, hello everyone. I'm Nimyo Mo from Myanmar, Ministry of Health. Uh, specifically, I'm from Matana Health Program. Uh, so I'm, but I'm a very new participant for DHIS2 and this tracker application. So I hope I can learn a lot from this training and reapply in my program as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mio Mo. Uh, next, you have Neha. If you could please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Neha and I work as a project officer with Health India. I am mainly a part of the AMR surveillance team and I look forward to this academy. Thank you. Thanks Neha. Uh, next up, Nelson, if you could please introduce yourself. Good morning everyone. My name is Nelson Magul. Uh, I am data and system manager at CCS Mozambique. Uh, and we use the DS2 tracker for our community activities. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Nelson. Uh, next, we have uh, Nilani. If you could please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm Nilani. Hey. Uh, I'm from Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, I'm a MD training in health informatics. I currently work at FSB where DHS2 uh, is being used uh, for several programs. Uh, so I look forward to this uh, training so that I can help them. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lisa, can you go next, please? Please introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Sejunisa working as a Senior IT and App Management Officer in Mercy Corps, Pakistan. Uh, I have 10 years of experience um, uh, of uh, uh, MIS development and uh, implementation in global film project for HIV. Uh, here in Mercy Corps, we, we are going to implement DHIS2 tracker capture at uh, GP uh, general position level. So looking forward to learn lots of new stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next, you have Rati. Can you please introduce yourself?
Hello, my name is Rati Shabrina. I'm from Hips Indonesia. So currently uh, we are implementing DHS to Treka for malaria and then uh, for COVID-19. Thank you. Thanks, Rati. Next we have Sadia. Uh, hello, this is Sadia Mani, and I'm from Hif, Pakistan, and I'm working as a research officer here. And yeah, looking forward to the sessions to get a better understanding of the HF2 tracker program. Thank you. Thanks, Sadia. Next, we have Shalom. Can you please introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Shalom from Myanmar, and now we're implementing our DHS2 for malaria. TB and uh, EPI, and also uh, for the uh, hospital uh, management. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Sharman Kelambi. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Sharma Kelambi from Sri Lanka. I'm a medical officer working for the Ministry of Health. I have five years of experience working uh, with DHIS2 implementations and had the good pleasure of working with Dr. Pamod. Uh, currently, I'm working for Family Health Bureau where a lot of DHIS2 implementations have happened. And so I'm looking forward to learn uh, the, learn more from this academy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Stephen Sani. Good morning. My name is Steven Sani from Abuja, Nigeria. Um, I have experience with um, DHIS2, um, both tracker and um, aggregate, and I'm looking to deepen my knowledge of um, implementation and um, use cases. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steven. Uh, next, you have uh, Yogesh, if you could please introduce yourself. Hello, hello. Uh, this is Yogesh. I am working with his media from Marshall Iber as a user coordinator. Uh, looking forward to learn something new. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Yogesh. Uh, next up, uh, Zakaria Vinishe Sulahu. Can you please introduce yourself? I'm Winniche from Ghana. I work with a malaria control uh, organization, and I also work with a PMI vector link that uh, deal with uh, control of malaria. And I work as a data entry assistant. I also work with the KIT currently as a research assistant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I think we have covered all participants. It's uh, really great to have such a diverse group of people with uh, unique implementation backgrounds for DHS2. So we hope uh, the academy will be fruitful for all the few uh, requirement and expectations. Um, so if anyone has been left out, uh, please feel free to Add introduction is a Zoom chat. Also, you, there is a channel for introductions on Slack. Uh, introduce yourselves. So please add uh, the same description there, so that participants can get to know you and uh, and you could interact with each other to get more experience uh, out of your implementations and the the academy course as well. All right. So uh, moving forward, next on the agenda we have. A quick introduction to uh, mood the DHIS2 platform that we'll be using for the academy. Um, <clears throat> so I'll quickly share my screen and uh, show the platforms to you once. So, yeah. So Moodle is the knowledge management platform that we will be using uh across uh, the next five days i'll put the link in the chat box and also i'll put the links on the slack channels for announcements so that you can access the um the the moodle platform from there uh in case you have attended dhs2 academies online academies in the past then you should have a username and password or the 
the account which you had created last. Uh, in case uh, you do not have an account, then you can click on new account and fill in a quick registration form to create a new account. And we'll ensure that you get access to uh, the Trapi Use Level 1 course, which is configured uh, for your uh, daily use and interaction uh, with uh, the knowledge management system. Um, once you successfully log in into the system, you will have the Tracker Use Level 1 Online Asia course. Uh, once you click on it, you have all the information listed here. So any announcements that will be made for Concerned Academy will be made on Slack and will be made available here as well. For the Zoom meetings, you will have the links available for each day so you could join those meetings. So in case this list turns out to be blank, then please click on all my Zoom meetings recordings. So this will give you the link for every day moving forward. So you can use the links for Magdas Tracking Asia. So daily you can join the meetings directly from here. The cloud recordings will be available here. So for the, and also will be posted on Slack. So you'll have access to yesterday's recording for the webinar available in the cloud recording session section. Uh, then you have an agenda listed here. So you can have a look at the agenda for each day that's available for review. Um, you The Moodle instructions are given here. So in case you need more help in understanding how to use Moodle, then and you have a detailed guide here for introducing for getting introduced to Moodle and how uh, you can use Moodle for your uh, uh, academy instructions. Uh, next, you have your uh, daily topics for each day. You have a section for feedback course introductions that we're covering today. Uh, you have uh, the sessions on tracker data model, track capture web. So each day, for each day, the sessions are listed here. And for uh, each section, you have the the uh, components listed here, the learning objectives, the learner's guide, the recap of the session, and the graded assignment. So these graded assignments uh, have to be done on Moodle itself. So these are uh, automated forms where you will be asked certain questions with certain multiple choice answers. Uh, which you need to select and attempt. So you all the assignments would be submitted uh, directly on Moodle, and then you'll have all the associated material available here. So if you want to download the presentation, you can download from here, or you can also review the presentation, which is embedded in the platform itself. Uh, so, um, yeah. So you have all the course item listed here. The final exam is listed here. So it will become active on day five. And for each sessions, you have all the material already available for download. So you can review that. Um, you will have your Moodle account active. So you can log in uh, on the Moodle account and review the material even after the academy. Uh, if you need more information, you want to review the presentations, the learning guides, or you want to review the recordings, those will be available so you can refer them from here also the recordings will also be part of a youtube channel so we'll share the link of youtube channel with you so in future if you want to refer any of the course recordings then you can do via youtube uh, as well so uh, we will put the link to access moodle both on the zoom chat and also on this flat channels so um, uh, please ensure that you are able to uh, log in and enroll yourselves into the tracker use level on all in Asia course or if you are a new user please ensure that you create an account and enroll yourselves in the level on online Asia course in case you're not able to do it then please let us know the facilitators will support you to get you onboarding on Moodle so that you have access to all the assignments on all the course material and the recordings as well so this was about Moodle then uh, next we have uh, an instance which has been set up specifically for the academy. The links again would be shared uh, on the Slack channel announcements. You can access this. Uh, for the DHS2 instance, you do not need to uh, create individual accounts. You have a generic account which is given on the landing page. So you can use that account for accessing DHS2 for 
uh, all graded assignments and your non graded assignments as well. So you, you will have access to the, the programs and the dashboards. Uh, we'll run the analytics on top of it now. You just set it up. Uh, and then you will be able to answer the questions which are part of uh, uh, the assignments by accessing this instance. So you'll have a generic login which you can use to uh, log in into the instance and use that for all your assignments and uh, both ungraded and graded assignments. So there's no need for individual access. You can use the generic username and password. Okay. So these are the two platforms. Then we have Slack available here for you. Uh, just let me sh share my screen. So uh, I hope all the members are now part of the, the Slack channel that has been created specifically for the academy. So the Slack will have uh, the Slack workspace will have different channels, announcements, uh, introduce yourselves, your questions. So any questions you have from the facilitators regarding the assignments or the course material, or if you want to have any doubts, you can always put the questions here in the questions channel. Or you could also reach out to the facilitators through one one chat uh, through the Slack uh, workspace. Uh, you have the announcements channel where all the daily updates will be shared. So as soon as the recordings are posted on the YouTube channel, we'll post the link for the um, the recording so that you can access that. And we'll after this session, we'll post the links for Moodle and DHS to instance as well for you to access those. Uh, during the course academy so uh, we have shared invites to all the participants who had registered for slack we'll just do a quick check if anyone has been left out in case you still don't have an email for joining slack please do let us know uh, we'll ensure that you get uh, invitation email to join the uh, the slack workspace for the academy uh, as well All right. Okay. So next we will uh, quickly uh, do uh, an overview of the use cases that we'll be using for the academy. Uh, just let me share my screen again. So, so uh, the primary use cases for the academy that we're going to use for the next five days would be our COVID-19 digital packages, which were developed for data collection for the COVID-19 use cases, such as case-based surveillance and uh, COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, and uh, we'll also be using some examples during our presentations on the national disease programs for HIV, TB, and malaria. So the examples would be uh, would be different. So that with the reason we're using different examples is to, to kind of give you a context on how the same functionalities can be applied to different health programs. Other than COVID-19 uh, based programs, which would be your uh, programs or your all uh, assignments. Uh, but in the course of the sessions, we'll cover different health programs as well uh, to give you a, uh, overall knowledge of the use of DHS to what different health uh, programs. So uh, the during the pandemic, when the pandemic started, uh, a rapid work was carried out to uh, make DHS to uh, supportive of COVID-19 data collection. So a lot of packages were designed in collaboration with the World Health Organization uh, headquarters in Geneva. So depending upon the available DHS to models and the way COVID-19 data was being collected, uh, these packages were defined for daily reporting, which is aggregate, for outbreak line listing, which was based on the events model. And then within the tracker program, there were three programs designed at the beginning, which were port of entry screening and follow-up, contact tracing, and case-based surveillance and laboratory uh, results management. Um, when the vaccination started in different countries, then a vaccination registry package was also defined. So we will have vaccination registry and case 
the surveillance and laboratory man results management of COVID-19 as your main programs for the academy. And contact tracing would be used as a support program. And so all the assignments that you'll do would be uh, based on these two programs specifically, while well, the examples would be varied depending upon uh, the, the topics which we'll cover on each day. So the case-based surveillance work flow that has been implemented uh, in the COVID-19 case surveillance program is quickly shown here. So the, the idea is that the patient visits the health facility and is screened uh, for uh, COVID-19. Uh, if the person is uh, COVID positive and needs hospitalization or isolation, then uh, he receives the treatment and details are filled in the case reporting form. In case the person is sent for uh, safer home isolation, then also the details are filled in the case reporting form. Um, in case it's still a suspected case and requires a lab investigation, then a lab request is made to confirm that specific case and lab results uh, are used to determine if the case is a confirmed case. So in case lab results come out as positive, then again, the details are filled in the case reporting form and a follow-up is conducted where the health outcomes are reported for the specific case as uh, not recovered, recovered or death. In case the case required hospitalization, then the details of hospitalization are also stored. In case it was not required, uh, the hospital is not required, then a follow-up is done to ensure that the person had tested negative after uh, uh, after the, 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 the virus cycle uh, gets over. Uh, in case the patient got discharged from the hospital, then the details are stored for discharge as well. So this is the uh, sample workflow on based on which the COVID case surveillance program was designed. There's a support document available for system design for COVID-19 case surveillance and contact tracing. You could refer this, the link is embedded below. So this is the reference document to describe the overall system design and how these packages were implemented and what considerations were made while designing these COVID-19 data collection packages. Yeah. Then in terms of converting the workflow into a DHIS2 data model, the first step was enrollment of the case into the COVID-19 case-based surveillance program, where the enrollment started with collection of, uh, collection of key um, uh, attributes or, or patients, uh, patients' demographic information, such as uh, case ID data about sex and uh, the date of onset of symptoms and when the patient was enrolled at the health facility. The stage one includes the examination of the patient to get all the clinical details and the diagnosis. So all the sign-in symptoms that the patient reported were made note of. If the patient was female and was pregnant, then those details are carried out. If the patient has had any past history of uh, diseases, then a predefined list of diseases available to select from. Uh, if the patient needed any hospitalization, then that was also added. Uh, there were sections related to identifying the risk of exposure on how the, the probable exposure might have happened, either through travel or the case may be a healthcare worker who got exposed from an existing COVID-19 patient. And then if it was, if the patient had traveled uh, recently, then the travel history is also collected in terms of uh, to which countries uh, or locally has the person traveled to get the travel history details as well. In case the person needs uh, uh, a lab investigation, then a lab request stage is available where we give the reason for uh, testing for COVID-19. Uh, we collect the specimen details and the test request details, which are reported as the lab result stage uh, and as the test results, which come out of the lab request. So both stage two and stage three are repeatable program stages. So you may have an entry test you may have a test at the exit. So you can create these tests multiple uh, times, the lab request and lab result stage. Health outcome uh, will capture details of the outcome of the patient uh, uh, and the contact summary in terms of how many contacts were traced for this respective individual and what was the health outcome of this specific index case. The support program which was used was uh, COVID-19 contact registration follow-up. So for each confirmed positive case, the, the potential contacts were the information was taken from the case and they were contacted and followed up and they were uh, registered in the con COVID-19 contact registration follow-up program. And in case these uh, contacts which were listed out tested positive, they were again enrolled into the case-based surveillance program. So the contacts were feeding in new cases into the case-based surveillance program as if they 
tested positive after getting exposed to COVID-19 from the respective uh, index case. Um, so this was an overview of how the case-based surveillance program has been designed within DHIS2 for collecting data right from the enrollment to the patient's exit and then also uh, keeping a track of the contacts that the patient might have uh, come across uh, um, and may have exposed the contacts to COVID-19 as well. For contact registration and follow-up work flow, uh, uh, if the patient who visited the health facility in the previous scenario uh, is identified uh, as a COVID-19 case, uh, then uh, all the, uh, uh, the, the clinical diagnosis and all information is collected in the previous program. Uh, and the, the additional, uh, additional point of entry that if the patient uh, is identified at the port of entry. So there was another program which was defined for port of entry screening. So a person uh, might be uh, identified at co suspected COVID case at the port of entry, at the airports, at the seaports, or on the road borders. So they would also be then uh, identified uh, as suspected COVID-19 cases. So from these patients uh, who were already identified COVID positive, the data for all contacts was collected and registered. And then these contacts were followed up for uh, signs and symptoms. And if they are, uh, if if on follow-ups, it was found that uh, these people ha had also started showing symptoms of COVID-19, then uh, the contacts were uh, supposed to uh, attend the COVID-19 health facilities, and then they were also made part of the COVID uh, case surveillance program. Uh, if the contact was uh, not identified as a potential COVID-19 case, then the contact was cleared. So uh, for each contact, the status could be maintained for identified as COVID positive or identified as uh, uh, a non-COVID case. And then uh, they could be given the exit from the program or they could be enrolled into the case surveillance program so that individual uh, requests for lab laboratories and their outcomes can also be reported as part of the COVID case surveillance program. So the workflow uh, in DHIS2 was the enrollment. Uh, the enrollment was happening uh, in, the, in the contact registration program where we were again capturing the contact case ID, date of birth, sex, and all demographic information which was required. The stage one was the follow-up stage where we were adding the relationship of the patient of the contact with the index case. So a relationship was established between the two programs, COVID case surveillance and COVID contact registration follow-up and the index case and the contacts were associated with the index case through which they were identified. An exposure assessment was carried out uh, to determine the, the current sign and symptoms that they have and then how uh, they how they're related to the index case uh, are they part of the family or they were traveling together uh, and then uh, uh, stage two is symptom on symptoms for noting down the clinical sign and symptoms on repeated follow-ups uh, so that they uh, it's a repeatable nature so you could do multiple follow-ups at seven days at 14 days to ensure that the patient has uh, has COVID-19 symptoms or not, or if it's a non-COVID case, then of course it could be uh, cleared uh, uh, at the exit, okay? In terms of the vaccination, uh, since the vaccination was based on uh, the person visiting, uh, of course, one being part of the eligible population uh, for getting the COVID-19 vaccination. So the person attends a vaccination uh, session at a health facility for their first or second dose. Uh, the clinician will register the person if the person has not visited before or they will carry out a search for that person through the demographic information. Uh, before giving the vaccination, uh, uh, a section was also there on underlying conditions to understand the past medical history of the patient. There were a set of pre-immunization questions related to uh, previous COVID-19 exposure uh, to analyze if there are any contraindications to COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, and if everything was fine in nine, then the clinician proceeds to vaccinate and register the dose. In case adverse effects were reported during the observation time with the patient, then a note of the adverse event following uh, the immunizations were also made. And once the first dose 
uh, is given, the clinician can schedule uh, the stage for next dose, depending on the vaccine on what is the, the duration between the two doses, uh, which was applicable as per the vaccine given. There's also support document available for the tracker system designed for COVID-19 immunization. So this could be referred for more information on how the work was converted into a DHIS2 model. So that we see on this slide as well. So it started with enrollment where you had collected details of uh, the onset of symptoms, case attributes, etc. Uh, now, if the patient was all, if you were using the same instance for COVID case surveillance and COVID vaccination, and you and this person had uh, uh, had a case of uh, COVID-19 before, then you don't need to register that person again. You can just search the person using uh, valid attributes, valid identifiable information attributes, and then can enroll that person into the COVID-19 vaccination program. Or if you're using a completely different instance for COVID-19 vaccination, then that person could be enrolled as such depending upon their availability uh, of the record in the system. Uh, so vaccination was made as a repeatable stage. Uh, in the first uh, instance, in the first stage, we after enrollment, we were seen the underlying conditions and we had some pre-immunization questions, uh, which were hidden in the, the second instance when dose two was given. And then there were vaccination AFI details, which are available for collection uh, for the, the patient. So when we'll be doing the demonstration sessions for Web and Android, we'll be covering these two programs in detail. And we'll be using these programs as a base examples for all the demonstrations and all the exercises. And when we'll be discussing the concepts, we'll be discussing the concept for before these for other uh, use cases as well. So the full description documentation of the COVID-19 packages, uh, uh, the link is embedded here. And there are YouTube videos for COVID-19 surveillance and vaccination use cases. Uh, you could uh, refer them and get a great understanding of how these modules were developed and were implemented uh, in DHIS2 and then how the support was provided to different countries for implementation of these programs um, uh, in, in, in real uh, use case scenarios. So this was an overview of the resources, uh, the use cases that we'll be using uh, across the uh, academy. Next week, uh, we have a quick session on COP. Let me check if Gassim is available for... All right, so we uh, don't have Gassim on the call at present. So maybe I can quickly give an overview of the, the community of practice and uh, the community badges as well. So the DHIS2 community of practice uh, is a platform where uh, the, the community members and the participants can um interact with the community uh, and the core developers and the implementation team members at the University of Oslo. So the the platform allows you to write different questions uh, and uh, information which is needed for your current implementation. So you see here that there is there are different topics uh, or different issues that have been uh, reported by different users. And responses have been provided by um, either the community practice coordinator or any of the users from the, the implementation partners from the his groups or the community users who have experienced similar issues in the past and uh, uh, have been able to uh, uh, report it. For example, if you see here, the user has reported some performance issues after upgrading to the, the latest release of version 2.37. So we have the chain here where Gassim is trying to resolve the issues at level one. And then he can also refer the 
um, the issue to the core development team and and uh, they would also uh, join the discussion in uh, trying to resolve the issues which are reported by the respective individual. So uh, not only the tool is being used as a communication platform for DHIS2 related issues, but all the announcements, uh, all the new use cases for which DHIS2 is being used are published frequently. So if you are not a member of the DHIS2 community or practice, we urge you to please sign up. Uh, using the uh, form available here. We'll also post link of uh, the community of practice on the Slack channel in the announcements. So if you're not already a part of the DHIS2 community of practice, please ensure you create an account for yourselves and uh, uh, put your questions, your, com your comments, your suggestions here, and definitely some will address those questions and ensure that you have the right response available uh, for your issues and your uh, feature requests uh, as well. So during the course of the academy, we have some community badges as uh, most helpful and most supportive participants. So uh, depending upon how you interact in the course of the academy, you will be handed over these badges uh, uh, as based, as a um, incentive for your uh, active participation across the academy. So we'll have uh, uh, we'll we'll remind you of these. Uh, uh, COP badges, which will be up for grabs for the for the participants to get these badges and get recognized in the community as active participants uh, in the DHIS2 uh, academies. Yeah, so this was about the COP. All right, so I've already introduced you to Slack. So uh, I see in the chat box, some of you might not have the access to it, but uh, we will check if an email has been sent out to you. If not, then we will send an email. You will get an invitation on the email uh, and that could be used for uh, uh, for joining Slack. So we'll work on that. So that was the end of information that I had to share uh, for onboarding you onto the course and introducing you to the different platforms that we'll be using, Moodle, Slack, and THIS2. Uh, uh, I'll uh, in the meanwhile, Pamod covers the next topic. I'll put all the links on the announcements channel on the Slack. Please ensure that you have you're able to log in into the Moodle account and you're able to access the DHS to instance as well. In case any questions, please feel free to write uh, the the concerns in the questions channel on the Slack workspace, and we will address those questions uh, at the earliest possible. Uh, so. Over to you, Pamod. You can continue uh, with the session, please. Right, uh, Sarab, I think uh, probably we can take a small break uh, now that we have kind of continued the session for like one and a half hours. Uh, sure, uh, you, you can please, uh, based on, I think, your assessment, just see how much time do you do. Yes, so uh, probably I think, um, uh, shall we take a break of like 10 minutes, uh, everyone? So right now, the time should be... Uh, Close to 2 p.m. Uh, Indian Standard Time. Um, so probably at 2.10, I think we can uh, start the session, the next session. Actually, that's the last one for the day. Yeah, right. So uh, hope to see you all in like 10 minutes. <laughs> 